Hello, guys, and welcome back to the Dead Kings podcast. It has been a while. Had some things in mind, but life has just been crazy. Anyway, so today we are just talking about the all the episodes and our thoughts on Star Wars Visions. I did a reaction video a while ago, and it's safe to say not a lot of people were very fond of uh, me not knowing what was going on and not liking the Umbrella Lightsaber. We'll get to the Umbrella Lightsaber, but we're actually going to go around and... Uh, we're going to get everybody's opinions on the show overall, and then we're going to go through each episode and just lightly skim over what we liked and what we didn't like. So today I'm joined down below by Brady or Moose. And then up here is Forrest right here, the lazy pool showing his face. Uh, and uh, I am TS Cosplay. So we're just going to get right into it. Brady. I haven't talked to you about this at all yet. I've talked to Forrest a little bit. I don't know what you're thinking. What are you thinking? After watching it, there were... Uh, I can't say I love it, but I can't say I hate it either. There are some things that I kind of do like. Um, it, it's, it's... it's, I don't know what to think, honestly. Like, I'm kind of at a loss of words of what to think of the show, whether I hate it or love it, or just kind of am in the middle. I'm kind of in the middle. Hmm, okay, and, and so you watched every episode, right? I watched every episode today. I watched all of the episodes. All right, so you're kind of middle-of-the-road type of deal? I would say more, unfortunately, toward disliking it. It's just there were a lot of things that I'll go over as we talk in the Rancast uh, that I didn't really like. Um, mm. And it just, like, there were certain things that kind of just, like, kept killing it for me. Like, I started like, okay, I'm going to give this a chance. And then as soon as I started to give it a real chance, something killed it for me. Mm. What about you, Forrest? What, what did you think overall? I really enjoyed it, actually. I'm on the opposite of, of Brady. I thought it was a really fresh perspective and put a lot of interesting details into play and opened a lot of pathways for future stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, it, it there are some points that you brought up that uh, about when we were talking um, about animation styles and stuff and we'll get to that in a sec well, we, well i guess we can talk about it now if you want to like how each episode had a different animation style yeah i really enjoyed the fact that like you said each episode had a different animation style especially the first one which i believe is called the duel um... which was uh, the really old there was the high contrast one with where the only colors were the blasters and the lightsabers yeah 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 that one, I think, is out of all of them, was my favorite, mainly because of the high contrast, like I said, and the very, very feudal J J Japanese vibe on it. Mm, mm. Brady, what did you think? Well, well, since we're already here at this episode, we'll just we'll just start now. What did you think of the episode? Likes, so, dislikes? Episode one, I, I did like a lot. There were a lot of cool things I liked about it. Um, it seemed I kind of had a little bit of trouble with some of the points of the animation, like the movements almost seem delayed with the speech and then obviously cutting down to the umbrella part. But as Forrest has said, the high contrast thing was really cool. And I also think when it came down to the just the two basic, uh, it being just two lightsabers instead of the umbrella, yeah, I, I didn't mind it, honestly. Like, yeah. I I quite enjoyed it, but there were just, like I said, there's certain things here and there that kind of just killed it. For me. Yeah. Um. For me, I, I, I like this episode. I really did like it. The the umbrella lightsaber, I don't care. Hate me if you will. I don't like it. Like it 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 was it was fine. Like when you finally saw like the, the use what she was actually using it for and stuff like that. I hated the whole thing where she actually used it as an umbrella to jump down. That's so stupid. I don't care what anybody says. I don't like that. Um But overall when she dropped it, let it go, you know, as you said, it was an attachment. Um, and she pulled out her actual lightsaber. The fight was really cool. His droid, mm -hmm. his droid. Are you kidding me? That was yeah, so sick. Yes, that Out was all the R2 units. That's number two right behind R2D2. Exactly. That was so sick. Um, and then I like to like, um, cause we talked about this in the Mandalorian rant cast about it was C episode one of season two of the Mandalorian where he helped, um, liberate another village type of thing. Um, after he did that in season one and this, the second I saw that, Hey, there's this guy who's going to help liber liberate this village. I kind of was like, I don't, I don't want to see that again. It's the same, the same thing, but they didn't necessarily like, well, they needed his help, but they all were kind of like, they were standing their own, you know, they were 
there was that Bosk guy um, who was going ham, and then there was a there was another another alien species I can't really remember, but it, there, was, it, there was also a Sebulba species in there. He was in that big droid thing. Uh, uh, a, the Doug. Yeah, the Doug. Um, it, so it was really it was really cool, and and it's hard to pinpoint which like where which um uh era these take place like certain um the episodes take place but i saw um i saw sorry my lighting decided to freak out anyway i saw um uh one of the bandits was wearing a first order like the bottom of a first order helmet mm-hmm. and so that must have taken place during the sequels or after the sequels or whatever but overall what were you saying for us oh, sorry finish i was saying overall Overall, I just, I I liked it. I just, uh, it's just that umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed the aspect of those uh, troopers or thugs or whatever they are, how each one had like a different part of the helmet kind of cannibalized into just some sort of functional gear. Mm-hmm. Like some had this like respirator, some had like a, a skull cap going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, some had like, yeah, yeah. like goggles made out of them. Okay, so the, out of that really one, like, creative. like, what was your, what was your overall? So, Brady, you liked it? Yeah, yeah, I liked it. I, I think I can that one. I can, I can do it and disregard the things I didn't like enough to say that I liked it. Okay, okay. And for you, obviously, you said it was probably your favorite episode. Yeah, yeah it was my favorite. The next and one, I like the, the background one. that Brady picked here, because we have all the different characters for most of the episodes, so we can actually pinpoint different animation styles exactly yeah yeah and i think at the beginning of it i think i'll put over the uh the trailer for this but uh the next one is tatooine rap city if i'm if i'm if i'm correct ah this one okay yep so okay so i'll go first on this one i i liked it there was only one big blaring thing that i didn't like about it and it was the I'm sure they had the voice actor of the main kid or guy or whoever, whatever he is like at that age. Cause it was really chibi style animation. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't like how they had him uh, singing in the music. They could have brought in a voice actor to sing and stuff like that, but, or like a replacement or a dub or whatever, but it was kind of, I didn't like that. Everything else, I really, really liked. Uh, Brady, we'll kick it to you since, because we'll go to Brady first, because I, he, I'm hearing all of his opinions for the first time. I honestly didn't like this episode. I didn't vibe with the whole band thing. Uh, it was kind of cool, but it, and then to me, the the animation style in particular, I didn't like because um, I didn't like the way that Boba Fett looked and some of the other characters looked. They look like they're all children. And I just, yeah. like, wasn't a fan of that art style. Like, that's just me in particular. I just I just couldn't get behind this episode. And I just wasn't about the whole band thing with their band instruments being weapons and, you know, stuff like that. Like, I get it. Like, they're kind of used to it now, and they've been getting chased. And so that's probably why they converted their instruments into weapons. Yeah. But I just couldn't get behind it. Like, I really just didn't feel like it was Star Wars or anything. I felt like I was watching a kid's cartoon that had nothing to do with Star Wars. It was just kind of like a they were using Star Wars to theme it, and that was it. Hmm. Okay. Forrest? Just give it a theme. Um, I went Brady on the animation sequence. I I was okay with it, but at the same time, I wasn't. Um, but it was still, all. it's all just great animation, just to be perfectly honest. Um, I did enjoy how Boba and Jabba were freaking vibing out at the end of it yeah at yeah the end of it. <laughs> um i'm happy that they didn't go the route that i thought they were going to do when the kid called out java on the stage i thought there was going to be another return of the jedi but he's like no oh. you want to be our sponsor yeah yeah that was yeah it's trying to fight or have a last stand they just they settle it like that yeah yeah i like I, that i like that he converted his lightsaber into his microphone i wonder if it still can function as a lightsaber <laughs> we'll see we'll see I'm getting some weird sounds. That might be from my end in the kitchen or something. Huh. Oh. Um, um, well, so the next one, well, okay, so what I will say for this episode, 
Um, just kind of skimming over it. Uh, I liked, I did like, uh, I, I liked the feels that it pulled. I liked the feels how right after order 66 that, the, that I believe his name is uh geezer found the kid. Um, I liked that was cool. I liked how we actually got to see Boba bounty hunt. You know, it was really cool. And I liked that yeah. they had Tamara Morrison. They had him come back and, and voice him, which was really, really cool. Uh, but I, I, I just didn't like the singing. Like if they would have had someone else singing, I would have been fine with that. But, but yeah, that, that episode, it's one that I'd watch again. I'd watch it again. Um, but yeah, <sighs> now we come to the twins. I Brady, go ahead. Go ahead. I once again, I didn't like this one. I, I did not like the animation style in particular. I guess maybe that's just me. I like a more detailed um oh, excuse me. I like a more detailed anime style and like something like these were just too like soft. Like I couldn't get behind what was happening. And then especially after what's her name? Is it M? Master M? Her the helmet comes off and everything. I just like, I was like, what? That doesn't even like match. Like to me, it didn't even match what the character should have looked like. And, and then the other twin looked almost like Han Solo to me with a lightsaber, like with his vest and everything. And it kind of threw me off. And I just, I wasn't a big fan of this one either, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, it definitely like I'll 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 jump in here and I'll just say that I don't like because the the two the, the biggest thing to me that I didn't like was that they were sitting there out in the vacuum of space without helmets on. Oh yes, that I'm glad you brought that up. That yeah. drove me insane. I was like, I kept that entire episode. I was like, okay, okay, we're yeah, buying everything. Well, right and then now, like, well then at the end when the droid coming gets the, the the sister that's floating in space, the droid's wearing a helmet. <laughs> The droid is wearing a helmet. I don't know if that was a rib. I don't know if that was part of the joke, but it took away any sort of like hype that I had towards. And I didn't like the droid anyway, but it, um, it, it was just like, it, it took so much away that like, I I was just, (sighs) Oh, I I will. I I do want to say one more thing on this episode too. And it kind of goes through the whole first season. Um, the I've got a bad feeling about this joke was used like four times through the entire season. Like it just was repeatedly used. I feel like once in every episode, it almost felt like, but I know of at least like three or four instances where like, I got a bad feeling about this or, Oh, I know you have a bad feeling about this. Like it just kept getting used. And it kind of like, and in this episode in particular, his droid said that to him. I'm pretty sure his droid's like, they're going to find us. I've got a bad feeling about this or something. And I was Mm -hmm. like, really, we're going to, we're going to, uh, at first, I was like, okay, cool, I get the reference. But it seemed like it happened like enough times where I was like, okay, I get it. It's Star Wars. Everyone gets bad feelings. Yeah, it's the biggest running joke in the whole Star Wars uh, universe, even the expanded universe. And yeah. it's, I can't even remember when they used it in, like, in the sequels. But I think, I know for sure they use Han says, I'm pretty, actually, I'm pretty sure it's Han. He says, I got a bad feeling in Force Awakens. But I'm not sure about the other two sequels. Yeah, I, I don't remember hearing it, but when I first heard it, I was like, huh, that was refreshing. I haven't heard that in a minute. And I don't really remember hearing it all that much. Maybe I wasn't paying attention as much as I should, but I don't remember hearing it all that much. I only really remember hearing it in this episode with the twins. Huh. Like I said, I'll have to go back and watch, but... So this episode, yeah, I, and then the whole, okay, so the kyber crystal stuff, do you want to, you want to talk about that for us? Do you, do you want to go off about that? Oh my God. I, I, I didn't, I didn't like the concept of, fuck, what was I going with? I just didn't like how she, the kyber crystal broke in half and one part, half was evil, one half was light or dark and light, and she used it into her suit, and the crystal itself was like, the part she used was like as big as my cup here. Mm -hmm. And then when she puts it into her suit, it's like just like a little tiny box on her chest. It's like an arc reactor. Yeah, (laughs) but it was a giant crystal that fits in that tiny little box. Yeah, I I think that was just some animation oversight there. Um, I 
like the idea of the pearlescent lightsaber the boy twin has. I don't know his freaking name. Uh, I'm just going to call him Luke and Leia, because that's what I thought they should have been, just clones yeah. of them. Um, the Luke clone oh, Luke with the clone. pearlescent lightsaber. It's a good idea. I just don't think it'd be possible in the actual Star Wars universe, especially where the part where it cuts to the freaking Star Destroyer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like that Star Destroyer thing since The Last Jedi, in The Last Jedi, whether you like The Last Jedi or not, like everybody was like, whoa, when that scene happened. And them doing it, like they did it at the end of Rise of Skywalker, like you see, you see a ship that split like that when the Ewoks are celebrating. And it's just kind of like losing the wow factor. You know, it's like the whole Death Star trope. Like, well, and that's the hard part for me is I wasn't invested enough in the episode and like really wasn't invested in the episode for it enough to grab me and make me think, oh, wow, you know, because it's like it, it just didn't have the same feeling. And that's another issue I had with that episode, how it went from a normal size lightsaber to when he's upside down, it's freaking long enough to cut through the ship, but doesn't cut <laughs> through his sister. Like, yeah. where did it just expand on feeling? It didn't like, just... I want you to go this long now, you know, like what? Like, I just and also really... that that part, it freaking went from like a 30 foot wide lightsaber just to a freaking microscopic tip just to get that one little box on her chest. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, and so the, the other thing that I just didn't like too, was it was kind of, there was kind of like a little time waste thing where they had the little vision or something where he saw into the future or pulled his sister into the future and saw what she was about to do. And she was like, is that me? And he was like, yes. And she's like, oh, well, I'm going to do it anyway, you know? And she just did it. And I was like, that was such a waste. Why? Like, she did it anyway, you know? <laughs> and maybe, again, maybe I'm missing a lot of stuff, but I don't care. I didn't like the episode all that much. I just, I didn't love it. Now, one question. Maybe you guys know that I don't. Are these supposed to be different short stories? Is that, are yes. they all yeah. apparently going to connect? Yeah. The, no, yeah. They're, they're all, they're all they're separate. Just... They're all separate short stories. Okay. That take okay. that take May place in different. Not be even canon in the first place. Well, they're as far as I know, they're not canon. Yeah. Um. Okay. So oh, the other you ever, are, uh... have you ever seen the Animatrix Brady? These short stories are like that. Oh okay. Um. One other thing I will say before we move on to the next one was I didn't like how all of a sudden she had laser whip things. Light and six arms. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up to there. See the eye roll. But like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I was like, what is this? Grievous 3.0? It was like I, it was like a Star Wars Doc Ock, dude. I just didn't I didn't I don't I, like that. I, I am a firm I don't care if light whips and stuff are already canon and stuff like that. I don't care. <laughs> Lightsaber should just be a sword. Like I I'm that's that's what they should be. Uh, there is uh, apparently, I don't know if it's canon or not, but they use Kyber crystals to power the death star. Yeah. So, oh, it is rogue one. What am I talking about? Um, <laughs> but so that's, I, I'm okay with that. Like that, that makes sense. That makes sense. And why they're on Ilum. Well, no, they're on, Il well, they're on Ilum to harvest Kyber crystals as well, but then star killer base, all that stuff, whatever. But, uh, it just, I just didn't, I didn't, I don't like them. I don't like them. I'm not going to I'm not going to back down because other people are like, well, just because there was a couple comments on my video. that were like, well, grow up and it's not even can. It's like, I don't care. Like, I don't I don't like what I don't like. Um, yeah, right. And that's the same for everybody. Yeah. And speaking of I things. The, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I might be personally. I'm one out of three. Apparently, I like the idea of the light whips being incorporated into her suit. I just didn't like how they can go from the whip to a rigid blade. Hmm. Okay. It, I haven't read anything like that in any of the books or comics. It, it's always just a, one solid light whip. Mm. Well, yeah, it's it's well. The next one, the next one was completely opposite of what the one before it was. Is the Village Bride? This one, I'll go first. I'll go first. I liked this episode. It was a vibe. It was a vibe. I understood little to nothing, but it was it was a vibe because like she's walking through. I, I at first um her name is I remember her name being F because I looked up a screenshot to post on my Instagram at TS Cosplay. Follow me. Um, but 
I looked her up. Her name's F, apparently. She was with this master, and they were, like, following this this couple. At first, I thought they were brother and sister, but then they're bride and groom-to-be. And uh, at first, I'm thinking that they're doing stuff where they're, like, looking into the past or into the future or something like that. And she's kind of walking through, um, walking through like visions and stuff like that. But once, once it, like the, the reason I liked this episode so much was just the end was the end. F was a really cool character. The end, that end duel, like it was so, it was so classic anime that it was it, it classic samurai. It was so sick where she pulls out that lightsaber, katana, that lightsaber katana, it's Ray's ignition sound and a yellow blade. And it was just so sick. How it just ended. I don't know. I liked it. I know I've seen online that a lot of people didn't like it, but what did you guys think? Brady, what do you think? That episode for me is not like I don't hate it. I don't love it. Once again, it's kind of, that one's kind of in the middle. Like I tolerated it. I liked it. It was kind of like it was just interesting to see. And then um I did like the end. I agree with you. I like the end, how it went out. Like it was the nice thing about the episode, it wasn't too overboard. I feel like the ep- twins episode was overboard. Like it was just too much. Mm. and this episode felt like a reasonable amount and a reasonable story and the animation style was good i didn't mind that but it just it wasn't like a super crazy powerful episode where it got me on the edge of my seat or anything but it was a tolerable episode that i liked i thought yeah i thought it was really good i mean especially the end i did like the end i think that was the icing on it forrest what do you think um to be perfectly honest i don't freaking remember it um i zoned out completely during Mm. this whole episode Understandable. Um, I did notice the lights of Katana. That was probably my favorite part. Um, also, the battle droids that they yeah. had. So I think it's maybe somewhere in between the prequels and the original trilogy. Um, on Brady's background, the chick with the red roses, I think that's a bride. Yeah. I really dig that animation style. It kind of reminds me of uh, season one of Avatar, The Last Airbender, mm. when they get mm. to the Northern Water Tribe. Mm -hmm. yeah and maybe that's one thing that i would say i wish they would have done is stuck with an animation style and that would have made it easier for me to get behind um because like as we see through like different ones some are way more detailed than others and personally me i like the more detailed ones yeah from the little shot that i'm looking at here it kind of like the animation style kind of reminds me of howl's moving castle that too it kind of does i was like oh like the, the the more shiny you know what i mean ish kind of anyway but yeah so i i liked the episode it was i don't know it was just a vibe dude like i think the big thing i didn't like about the episode was that at one point they're like at the 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 marriage celebration thingy and the bride's sister stands up it's like we need to fight against these guys we need to this we need to that and she like takes off this coat that she's wearing she's wearing a cheerleader outfit underneath and i'm like that's not star wars i don't care if it is anime that's not (laughs) star wars um so that's the one thing i didn't like but the rest of it like if they if somehow someone makes that lightsaber katana i'm getting it like that is so cool um but yeah i mean kyber light has lightsaber katana or katana blades for sabers well yeah those are the ripper blades i'm talking about a hilt the oh, yeah. hilt is something else like imagine a, like a katana a light, like a hilt but where the window would be is it'd be difficult but where the like you see my you see my katana back here, right, right, right here. You see it? No. You don't see my katana? No. Do you see it, Brady? I see it. Yeah, force is tripping then. Um, but yeah, where the where the where the the hand guard is, um, if that was like a window where the light is shining through it, where the blade comes out, that'd be cool. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, that's. The Village Bride. The next one. Oh, man. The Ninth Jedi. Oh, boy. This is the one where all the Jedis come together, right? Uh, kind of. I'll read the synopsis for you since if you forgot. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. The daughter of a lightsaber smith is yes. pursued by dark forces while on a dangerous mission. Yes, yes. I know exactly which one you're talking about. I'll go first on this one if that's cool. Yeah. I personally like this episode. This was probably one of my more favorite episodes. I don't know which one was my favorite. I might be with Forrest on number one. But this one, 
I did like. Um, it just, to me, it felt very Star Wars. Um, I liked how you had the Smith. However, I know that's not the traditional way that you're supposed to get a lightsaber. So that kind of wasn't vibing with me completely because I know a Padawan is supposed to go get their own Kyber Crystal and make their saber themselves. Yeah. And this saber smith was making them. So that kind of took away from it a little, but I I almost kind of understood because lightsabers mm. in this scenario or in this short had basically become extinct. Like you couldn't find them. So there was no way to remember how to build them. Mm. And so to me, I was I was like, okay, cool. I get this. Like they're just trying to bring people together to reestablish the order. I'm fine with this. And I actually really liked it, the animation style and everything. And I liked mm-hmm. how her lightsaber, the daughter's lightsaber, didn't have a color right away. Mm-hmm. I liked and I, I thought I, that was actually cool. I liked that. Yeah. Like that that's where I was I was too. I was telling Forrest that I completely I again like I, I, I accepted how it was with the lightsaber smith stuff and how he cut started tinkering with lightsabers and how the crystal was now based on um their connection to the force. Mm-hmm. And I the, like that too. And the big reveal where she's standing off against that Sith and her lightsaber becomes green. I dude, I was I was to me, this was the best episode in the show. It's my favorite episode, and I think it'd be cool if they made like maybe a little a mini series off of it, just finishing the journey where they find the la- the, the other Jedi's. But what did you think mm-hmm. for? Sorry. <laughs> what do you think for? Uh, what do you um, I really enjoyed it as well. It's number two for me, at least. Um, the re- I like that the fact that they need that he's a sabersmith mostly evolves from the fact that the Empire made like owning a lightsaber illegal. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why they had such a hard time finding their own kyber crystal. They need someone to actually go and do it. I low key think he was a Jedi at one point as well, because um, he used a uh, what's it called two to minutes to re- deflect that blaster bolt that was shot at him by the bounty hunters mm-hmm. or thugs whatever and just that reveal in the aerial temple it was just uh when they're asking about that one guy and he reveals himself and just red all around mm-hmm. yeah that oh my gosh dude that where they all turn on their lightsabers boom they're red i was like Ugh! i was like this is not good. Yeah, my heart kind of sank right there. Like, <laughs> no! And, I, and that's another big thing I really didn't like about the episode was the, the fact that it, you picking up the saber determined, it would determine, almost like the sorting hat of Harry Potter, mm. what you were going to be. And I kind of like that. I like that concept. I really do. And But yeah, um, when that happened, I was like, it didn't no. decide what you were. It went off your connection. To right, right, yeah. It, it went off who you are as a person. Yeah. What yeah. off your and connection like to the Force, the Brady? Was that? Not who you are as a person, your connection to the Force. You could be a great person and still be have dark side tendencies. Oh, mm-hmm. my bad. Anakin Skywalker, yeah, he was just manipulated. Brady, it's, it's common sense for Star Wars. What do you mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like poetry. It rhymes. It. it times. But, yeah, that, that episode, I if they did, like, another, like, maybe... Four or five episode miniseries concluding that story. I really, I really like that. I think it'd be cool. I hope if they do, I just don't want it to overstay its welcome. Yeah. Maybe, um, like you said, maybe like four or five mini episode miniseries and like maybe a short movie, like 45 minute movie, mm. just capitalizing on everything, just yeah. including it. Yeah. Now, the next one TOB1. Toby. This one is. I liked it. Uh, do you remember it, Brady? Yeah, I don't like this one. I Go ahead. Like this one. Go ahead. I I don't like it because the animation style hugely killed it for me. Hugely killed it for me. And um, I I just didn't like the concept. Like, as soon as he was able to finish his uh, father's. Uh, job that he wanted done to create life on the planet that then he was adult enough to be able to fight and win win, and win the fight i know we've seen through star wars people with no training or little training winning fights but this was just to me ridiculous like i just couldn't get behind how the story was and how it all played out and stuff like that i was like uh just didn't work for me at all for fair 
That's fair for your opinion, Brady. Uh, for those who don't know, the episode we're talking about, the animation style, is the little robot kid over Brady's left shoulder. Um, but right. oh, this well, one they definitely was... Oh, right yeah. Yeah, that one. The animation style and was definitely set up for a younger audience because it reminds me a lot of Ponyo from Studio Ghibli. Ponyo! I, I, had, Ponyo. I, had, I had to do um, it. <laughs> Me and Taylor were talking about it, I think, day before yesterday. And for him, it reminded him of Pinocchio, but me, it reminded me of Astro Boy, just the whole animation and story-wise. Mm. But it was a good story for this episode. Like I said, definitely pandering to like the toddler age of kids, maybe like three to six. Mm. I, I, again, with the whole Pinocchio thing, I liked it a lot because Pinocchio is my favorite Disney movie. Like, it's my favorite story. I love Pinocchio. But, and this was obviously set up around the time of Inquisitors. Because an Inquisitor came and killed his father and then was finishing the job. I, someone who's, he's not beating an Inquisitor. I'm sorry. Like, he, he's just not. Um, But, yeah, the, I that's about all I have to say about the episode. Like, it's kind of like, I don't know, like, definitely, it, it, the message is there, though. The message is to believe in yourself and to become what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Achieve what you want to achieve. I get that message. That's a that's a perfect episode for for anybody. Um, but it doesn't mean it's going to entertain everybody. It's not going to be everybody's yeah. favorite. Um, so I understand that. And, and, and it was, it, it also, I don't know why, but um, what's that show? The Teenage Robot. Oh. My life as a teenage robot. Yeah, Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. That's the exact same he looks like her, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, a little bit. Man, now that you pointed like, out, oh, my man, gosh, I can't remember what it was called either. I was like, this is, just seems like that's what this is, but Star Wars. All right. Well, that is well, T. Robot using the Force to me is just a little far fetched, but other than that, it's fine. Yeah. Well, Vader can. Ch- oh, he uses his mind to choke. Maybe he wouldn't. But he was he was human originally. This, this robot, as far as we know, is 100% robot. artificial. That's true. That's true. But that is T.O.B. 1. Uh, the next one, I want Brady's instant reaction to this one. The Elder. <laughs> what did you think just... of this? <laughs> what did you think of this? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just, hey, it's time to get my scabs in. <laughs> It's Brady. No. This episode is about Brady. I like this episode. Um, <laughs> not to do with just it being an old man, but um, the animation style reminded me of the Ninja Turtles animated show. Um, that's what that reminded me of, and I really liked it. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> it, was, it was just kind of like a very simple episode in a very simple short story that mm-hmm. made sense from beginning to end, and it, it just ended. Like, you didn't really... I mean, like, you can carry it on, obviously, but it almost doesn't need to. And I, that's what I really liked about the short story. It was enough of a conclusion, but a, and it was enough of an intro to where you're not really questioning anything necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I liked it. I really did. And um, I liked how he had two swords, the old man, but it wasn't anything, like, insane, right? Like, the umbrella mm-hmm. saber thing. Like, it was just two mm-hmm. blades, simple cut and dry. Uh, and I liked how... I really did like how the um, the Padawan right over here on my left, like how he was just, he didn't, so often we see Padawans get ahead of themselves and he didn't. He stayed cool. He stayed collected. He blocked the blades as best and as long as he could mm-hmm. before his master got there. Like he, you never see him get hot headed or cry or freak out or, or anything like that. He maintains his composure as a Padawan, does what he needs to do to survive. And then his master comes along and he lives. So that was kind of refreshing. It didn't follow a theme of like, typical pad ones freaking out or not being able to like hang or, or anything. You know? Yeah. Like, their training actually mattered. And I just liked it. It was, it was a good episode. I liked, um, yeah. Like what you said is I liked how he did an Anakin episode to it mm-hmm. where he didn't, you know, no, I'm taking him now. Yeah. I, I, I like how he didn't do that. And I liked how he, uh, how, I don't know. I, 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 I liked it. What do you think about the episode for us? I liked it a lot. Uh, again, just that very Japanese samurai aspect that I really enjoy. Um, you said it reminded you of the TMNT animations. For me, it reminds me of Inuyasha, the late 80s, early 90s animation style. 
Um, this is another one I feel maybe could evolve into a short uh, story saga of its own, just following just the the master and apprentice. Mm-hmm. But overall, yeah, it's really good, really enjoyable. Um, just I can't watch it anymore because Brady is the old man, and I'll never. <laughs> well, with that, like he, the way he was just kept. <laughs> Well, and the way he was talking crap, he's like, if, uh, like, what what happened? If After, I met the thi- you in my prime. Like, that, and then the scary part was when he got his one lightsaber broken, and his eyes got all big, and, oh, God, don't do that, dude. What the heck? <laughs> but his eyes got all big, and he started getting pissed off and stuff, and, like, that. I like how he cut to the chase, and he didn't go to episode two. He wasn't like, man, I'm going to come in and fight you, and then start flipping everywhere. Like, it was for... For for an anime, it was one of the most grounded battles, lightsaber battles in in recent memory. Well, right, it wasn't out of this world. Like, yeah, like it was insane things. Yeah, it was really really good. Um, but he his shit talking was so great. Um, he was just great. The master, the master reminded me of like kind of I don't know why he reminded me of somewhat of like a if Qui Gon was grumpier. Dude, yeah. I thought the same thing. I Not from here, but he reminded me of Qui Gon. In in a way, just more stern. Yeah. Um, but it was it was a good episode. It 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 definitely like when I was watching that episode for some, I felt like I was actually watching a series, like a series mm-hmm. about that story, about that 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 plot. Um, but it it was, and then when we'll, when they're like we're looking for a, an old master or whatever, they go over and they see the ship. And it's black with red lights on it and stuff. I'm like, oh, yep. And I was like, how is this old yep. man? How's this old geezer driving around in this freaking Hellcat? Like, like what is he? <laughs> Gosh. Uh, but it was it was really cool. It, I liked we, it a lot. Are we not going to talk about how he turned to Cole when he died? We. I forgot about that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. How yeah, like Yoda and Obi Wan just vanished. Uh, Sith just turned to coal and dust yeah i like i like that a lot i like that thank you for reminding me about that because that was something that i i didn't take notes for this show i'm kind of going based off of feelings and memory um but yeah that that was i like that a lot all right so that is the elder the next episode is lop and ocho i think that's how you pronounce it yeah i think it's yes Uh, a family torn between what to do with the m when the empire and roaches on their planet this is the one with that little bunny looking thing over on Brady's screen. Uh yeah. right before, right below the guy with the kid with the green lightsaber. It Brady, what'd you think? Okay, so this one was okay. So it like I didn't hate this one. Um it had a good story to it and it it was nice to see because you have this this leader, this clan group that is taking care of the planet and they both have their differing opinions. Um on the planet and what they think is right for the planet and they were both doing what they thought was right and it was interesting to see the development of the the daughter the blood daughter we'll call mm-hmm. her, um yeah. go from loving her dad to saying look you're wrong you don't understand uh, the future is now old man kind of thing <laughs> yeah and, i mean essentially that's what she it's said, true she does, it's know? true and it just simply goes over to the empire i was like yo what and then um, Lop, how she's like, no, 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 that's all wrong, blah, blah, blah. And she's torn between which of her two adopted sibling or adopted family to go for, her sister or her dad. Yeah. And for me, it was a pretty, it was a pretty powerful episode. I'm not a big fan of Lop herself, like the bunny species character. I don't know. It just doesn't really work for me. It just is weird to me. It just doesn't flow with Star Wars, but. Hey, I'm not saying there's not that species out there. I've just never seen it. And so for me, it's just weird. Yeah. It's just weird to see it. And so it doesn't work for me. But her character and personality and everything, I'm totally fine with. And the way she fights and how she ends up going to defend her dad. And it was really sad when he lost his other eye. I was like, oh, yeah. And then he's trying to like, yeah, he's almost heartful about it. But I lost still... my good eye. Now I won't be able to look at my beautiful daughters. Yeah, I was like, Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just hit me in the hard strings right now, but I honestly did enjoy this episode um, more than some of the others. So I, 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 I liked it. Um, I really enjoyed it as well. It's for me. I would put the animation style like maybe 
mid '90s animation for anime. Uh, it was really detailed. I love, I love the ancestral light, uh, lightsaber that oh, yeah. he gave her. Oh yeah, yeah. That was, I'm, yeah. If that ever comes out in any lightsaber shop, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best to get it. Do it. <laughs> but the, that blade with the the canto written on it, I just. Oh, the, it was so the sick. The grip itself is... Let's let's leave lightsaber designs to to animation des- like anime anime uh illustrators. Let's let's leave that yeah. to them. Like let's yeah. let's leave it to them. Um like Brady was saying very uh heartfelt episode her choosing having choose between the two people she loves most in life that saved her from being uh what was she a slave? Yeah, she like, was essentially like, like, yeah, she was essentially a slave of the empire. Yeah, um, I'm ar- I'm already mad at the internet, the Star Wars purpose because I know what's gonna happen to her and I don't want it to happen to her. Um, oh God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> no. Um. Well, speaking of her, I the re so at first when I saw her, I was like, I don't like this creature I'm seeing. But the more you you I I I was like, she's very bright, even for being like a enslaved. Like her clothes weren't dirty they weren't they weren't grizzled like she was very bright very excessive so people could like in so i see it on two fronts one from like uh uh, a uh uh identify um light so like if there's a younger audience they can identify who she is like obviously they want to introduce some like a, a furry character but they don't want it to be a wookie or an yeah. Ewok or something like that. So they had to come Which up with something. Kind of refreshing. Yeah. And then from like an adoption standpoint, because I am adopted. And so usually like I could feel the, there was that she's not even our real family type of stuff. And the looking at it and seeing that there's differences there, but that doesn't, when it comes to, uh, he said, what, what did the dad say? He said something when it comes to inheritance, it, blood isn't key. Right. Yeah. 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 That that was something that I really really liked. Yeah, I might maybe botching the line, but I, I can understand. I can understand why they why they they did that that made her look that way. But I don't. I'm not over the moon about the 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 her design. But once you know, you spent the how long was the episode? Is about 15 minutes or so. Um, I got used to it. You know, I, I got used to it. I didn't run in there wanting to hate everything, um, but I got used to it. The episode was about 20 minutes, so I, I got used to it. But the overall story, I oh, and then one thing that really did weird me out, or like it, it, two things that got me were when the daughter cut her hair, I was like, what does that even signify? I don't remember them saying that that has anything oh, to do with her. That kind of has to more to do with Japanese uh, family traditions, like, the best way I can describe it in a way you understand, you watch the Avatar Last Airbender series. Remember in the beginning of season two where Iroh and Zuko cut their, their top knots off yeah. after they were betrayed by Azula? Yeah. That's them signifying that they're no longer part of that family or okay. royalty. Pretty okay. Much. Okay. That makes sense. Um, And then the next thing that really got me was that she, like, was a director or something, was in Imperial an imperial uniform the next time we see her after that and i was like whoa like that was that was like a like a slap in the face like this is real and then the one thing that really kind of got me is like she gets cut up the chest as far as we've seen she's not wearing something like moff gideon's wearing with where it's armor on her chest Mm -hmm. it's something that director krennic was wearing so that's just cloth as far as we know and because he gets shot in the gut and goes down but that that was a blaster bolt and she gets sliced close range with two swords a lightsaber and then a vibro blade and she falls off the thing but then lands on a ship and it's just standing up and then she's like seeing it don't even care you know like she has the cuts on her chest yeah i didn't like that either like i like because you clearly see the cut marks i like how it didn't kill her i like how it didn't kill her but i don't like that she kind of just shrugged it off you know what i mean it might just be lop uh, and the story is signifying the message that I could kill you, but I'm just going to leave this mark let, to remind you what I could do. And that's Maybe. where I would... That, might be a little far-fetched. Yeah, that's where I'm kind of like, that's something up here, up here, a facial type of thing, but the chest stuff, it's it didn't kill the episode for me. I'll just say that. 
So yeah, that yeah, is yeah. that is Lop and Ocho, if I'm pronouncing that right. Ocho, Th- yeah. This last one, Akakiri. I I can't pronounce that one. Can you pronounce Akakiri? Yeah, Akakiri. This one by far is my least favorite episode. I do not like this. This visions could have went without this episode. I finally finished it, by the way, (laughs) I finished it. (laughs) The ending was kind of like, but the build up. I can't remember for some reason. It's do you want to remind him for us? I can't really remember it. Oh, I'll read. I'll read it. A Jedi returns to his forbidden love to help defend her kingdom from Sith like Shogun. Oh yeah. This one. Okay. And he ends yeah. up to save her. Essentially, he joins the, the the Sith. Okay, so that's my question, right? It's right there. First, first question I have is: Don't the Jedi have healing powers? Right? No, not all of them. It's really actually quite rare to, for them to have healing capabilities. Okay. Most of the time, they re- rely on just normal state of the art medical facilities that. Like back to tanks and back okay. to gels, that and kind of stuff. And that's as far as healing. Bringing someone back to life is actually is solely a Sith thing. Not necessarily as well. It's it's so, it's a force. That, it's like, more it, sought after by the Sith. The the way the best way I can put what how they out like the force is for me now in my mind. It's a uh, it's there's a quote from a Revan fan film. You know where I'm going with this force that Revan says there's no. There's no power that a Sith possesses that a Jedi cannot choose to wield. Um, yeah. uh, and so when it comes to accurate. like, yeah. So when it comes to that stuff, that's kind of like, like Anakin Skywalker stuff there. Like mm-hmm. how it could have went with Padme, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. Not, I, I didn't like the episode. Like I'm with you. I, we could have went without it personally. Um, the two things that, that got me with that it. episode where the animation style, I didn't like it at all. I I didn't. No, I no. it was funky. The second one was those two. The least favorite. The two travel guides or whoever they were were annoying as nerds. They were so annoying. Like yeah, it, yeah. Well, freaking when they're going through that pass, that's me. You, me, and you guys. When you guys are on your bullshit, and I'm not happy anymore. Just stop it. <laughs> stop, shut up. Shut stop. Up. Oh, just sh- quiet. <laughs> but yeah, it. It was just like the episode was just I don't I didn't like it at all. I didn't I didn't I really I really hated the lightsaber animation how that kind of just like like frame by frame movement instead yeah. of like a, a sweeping gliding effect. Yeah. It I I d I didn't like it at all. It was it again, like I said, this the visions could have went without it and would have lost nothing. Um mm-hmm. yeah. so ranking this, I'll give it I'll give so from favorite to least favorite. My favorite episode, the ninth Jedi. The ninth Jedi, I'll say, the Village Bride, the Elder, uh, Tatooine, or the Duel, Tatooine Rhapsody, TB B eight, Lop Ocho, uh, and then, no, I don't know. Forget about what I was saying. Forget it. <laughs> I lo- I was I'm looking at him. I lost him. Overall for visions, um, I'll give it a seven out of ten. I'll give it a set. There were a that, couple. I'm not gonna lie. Is more generous than I initially thought you were gonna give it. Really? That is a lot more generous <laughs> because when we watched the trailer, I think both you and I were on the same page about it, <laughs> and maybe not. Maybe I hated it more. I don't know. But... <laughs> I originally, I, I was like, we, you, I was expecting like best, best to five or a six. Not well, a seven. so the, so the reason that I'm giving it more than what I originally thought I would is because it. I originally thought it was all going to be one thing that like Lop and Ocho were going to be meeting up with TB or TOB one, and that they were all going to mesh oh, in one whole on, uh, ensemble thing. Yeah, that they were all going to be. I liked, I liked it more that it was short stories. That's why I liked it. I don't know if you guys have seen the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, where the pan shot thing came from, but that is a it's about a bunch of like um, Western tall tales, short stories, and I really like that. And so I like things done like that. Like it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's not a, it's not too little. It's not too much. So 
I thought yeah. it was all going to be one thing, but yeah. Oh, my battery's about to die. Um, for me, shoot. Um, I'm gonna go with like, I'm gonna go with a six because there were only two episodes I was like really behind. And for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with a six on this one. There were a lot of good things or, or more bad things that I just couldn't get behind. A lot of it came down to animation style and stuff. But um, I'm gonna go with a six for me. A six from Brady Force. What what uh what are you looking at? Um, I'm somewhere between like an eight point five and a nine. Um, mostly for me, the reason behind it is just the possibilities that each story opened up, going into the future. Um, just the whole Jap- heavy Japanese aesthetic that they went with, because I know there's Japanese aesthetics throughout all Star Wars. Just how heavy it was here, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed. Um, mostly what's keeping it back from a nine or a ten is just the last one. Yeah, that episode was so bad. It was. Yeah, it was so bad. But so now here's a question that I pose for you guys: How many more seasons do you think they're gonna go? Uh, I think they might elaborate on the Lop Ocho, uh, maybe a little bit more of F from the Bride, um, the mm-hmm. Bride episode, and they have to do something with the Ninth Jedi. So I think they might do another season with with more from that. Maybe yeah. a season, maybe two more. Maybe. Oh, okay. I agree with Taylor completely. I like if they do another season, I'm pretty convinced the ones that they left with that had a huge story possibility, like Lapa Nocho, the Night Jedi, maybe Toby for the younger kids, mm. um, and a couple other ones like. They have huge story potential that they can either put into more TV shows, a movie or two, or just continue on comic books or just graphic novels. Mm. What about uh, you, Brady? Yeah, yeah. What, would would you care for another, other seasons? I would be interested to see what they go with based on how their viewings go with the first season to see if they go with something. Mm. I am not against a Star Wars anime. What I want to see is consistency. I'd mm. like to see a story storyline even if it's multiple perspectives but a storyline of a character in anime style in a consistent anime artwork style not different i'd mm. like to see that and i think that would make a huge difference for me because if we got to see a story that was unlike any other star star wars story we've seen so far that relates to the skywalkers or anything like that just something completely different I would be behind that. And I would like to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But beyond, beyond that, I would say me, I, I think best one season. Yeah. Yeah. Well guys, that was our thoughts on star Wars visions. If you liked what you saw, I want to see more, make sure to follow me on Instagram at TS cosplay. And we'll see you guys next time when we uh, review venom. Yes. I need to watch this. Oh, the trailers o- are driving me nuts. October 1st oh, boys. October 1st. All right. We'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. See ya.